The silvery lurid sky darkened as the clock ticked away in sinister trepidation. The crowd quivered as the aircraft overed with the remains of Mrs. Fumilayo Adoniola Inka, late Deputy Governor of Ekiti State, and finally landed at the Akure Airport on Wednesday, April 24, 2013. Already waiting at the grief-stricken tarmac of the airport were Ekiti State top government officials, odds of journalists, and curious bystanders. In half an hour, the convoy screeched to a halt in Adwekiti with grinding grimace and creepy climax. The fallen row of dozy roads, the frowned brows of frosted folks, and the prolonged cloak of floating scows all snowballed into mammoth lamentations in the land of honor. Our Excellency, the Deputy Governor, who left Ado about two months ago in a cheerful driven Lexus, has now returned in a body bag placed in a hairs. Olainka died in Lagos on Saturday, April 6, 2013, after a futile fight with breast cancer. The news of her death threw Adwekiti into a long night of tears. The high and the mighty wept like commoners. Even Governor Kayo de Fayemi fell in a hail of agony. Her aged parents, especially her 80 year old mother, Dickness Adetutu Famuagun, went into a delirium of sorrow, asking repeatedly, Where is Fumilayo? <laughs> Even at Aikori residence, the mood was morose and hysterical. Her husband, architect Olanre Waju Olainka, stared vacantly in endless bewilderment. The rueful wails, the regretful tales, the soulful sobs and sorrowful songs created a peculiar theater of tears in Adwekiti, with attendant scenes of misery, mourning and melancholy. Fondly known as Moremiekiti, Olainka began her final journey on Tuesday with a well-attended service of songs at the Even Event Center on Bakinjobi Street, Ikeja, GRA, Lagos. It was an evening of solemn worship with soothing hymns, an evening of anguish bearing in a stylish ambience, and an evening of distress concealed in sartorial caresses. Hmm, it was a frightful fair of socks where smiles were scarce. Drops of tears rolled especially on the front row when gifted gospel singer Lara George dropped a lyrical bombshell, Ijobaru which magically jolted everyone into the reality of death, its inevitability and eligibility for paradise. While two of the deceased three daughters took some Bible lessons, bulky preacher Yemi Agbelusi gave a short sermon. As early as 9 a.m. on Wednesday, the elitist streets of Okpebi swarmed with cars and cavalcades. Security agents and traffic managers, classic guests and clergymen, paraphernalia of power and insignia of palaces. No doubt, it was a day of glory with gory pictures of gloom at the Anglican Church of Ascension, or maybe venue of the commendation service for the late damsel. The MIC Paul bearers arrived at the church premises with the body of the late deputy governor, cocooned in a brown casket, swatched a Nigerian flag and a kitty colors. Soon, her husband, architect Larry Olainka, and children accompanied the coffin as it was being wheeled to the sanctuary on a wooden trolley amidst somber chorus of Sing Hallelujah forth in duteous praise. Yeah. 
there were sentences, scriptural lessons, psalms and a defined sermon by the retired Bishop of Lagos West, Dr. Peter Awelewa Adibi. There were also interludes of special presentations, most of which left tears in the eyes. She was a lay reader in the Anglican Church of Ascension. The strife is over. The battle is done. The commendation service was brought to a close with this consolatory recessional hymn. And Olaike's body was flown to Akure Airport for onward movement to Adwekiti, where it was received by Dr. Kyle Defiemi, Olaike's boss and brother in the service of Ikiti people. Flustered. Frenzied and feverish, Fayemi thanked God for giving Ekiti a woman of strong character like Olainka and lamented the tragic loss of the Amazon. The landscape milieu of governor's office emitted despair as civil servants in sackcloth of mourning milled around in boiling circles. But at the dawn of Thursday, April 25, 2013, Olainka's remains were taken back to the governor's office where a special executive council meeting was held in her honor. It was a meeting of tears and emotions. From there, the body moved to the Ekiti State House of Assembly for a memorial parliamentary session held in honor of this lady of style. At noon, the late deputy governor's body was finally driven in an elaborate convoy to the Kayode Oluyemi Stadium for a lying in state. Here, Nigerians from all walks of life sobbed because she died and smiled because she lived a great life. It was an afternoon of tributes. Leading the pack of homemade payers were Governor Fayemi and his wife, Bisi. Unto the Lord, all we have to say is thank you, God. Know that in moments like this, we sometimes wonder why do bad things happen to good people. Our solace is that you did not die on song. Keep resting in the bosom of the Lord. Good night, Marimea Kitty. We shall not relent until we make poverty history in this land. Because I know that's when you will look at us from above and smile that infectious smile of yours that we conquered poverty. We made indifference impossible and we affected the lives of our people positively. Marimea Dashuru. Afi koko ide kpo mi lodo. Afi wuda afadaka shogi la wujo ekbe. More mi obiri ogun. More mi ti e wude le mi obodo pa. That is the only key I made up for my beloved sister and friend, Mrs. Fumilayo Olayinka. She would respond by saying, Obiri le nkesi ye. Emma Kimilo. Also, Olainka's daughter Olamide led her two sisters with an inspiring tribute. Mom was a guiding light. 
She set the example of what a good wife, mother, and friend should be. She was God-fearing and brilliant in so many ways. She truly believed that she could pass through raging waters in the sea and not drown because God was with her the entire time. I know that's how she felt about her battle with cancer. She knew that even if cancer won, God would be there with her to carry her safely to heaven. Mom put God first in everything that she did. The very colorful event anchored by Kola Jumobi, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Information, featured music interlude by the Akita State Cultural Troupe. Delectable in death, captivating in casket, Olayin can be motionless in the pavilion as everyone took turns to catch a glimpse of the grievous glamour resplendent in purple lace, white beads and purple headgear. With a trademark red lipstick, stylish gele and eye shadows, Olayinka's lifeless body was full of life. The even tide brought more thoughtful reflections in psalms, songs and sermons. It also brought howls and bowels of emotions. Family members, political associates, professional colleagues and government officials gathered inside a white marquee placed on vibrant grounds of the government house for the wake-up service. Finally, it was Friday, April 26, 2013. The appointed day for Olaika to return to Mother Earth. The last lap of the journey of no return started at sunrise at the Cathedral Church of Emmanuel, Adoikiti. In earnest, the corpse arrived at the church and it was received by officiating ministers. The service attracted eminent Nigerians from different parts of the country. The hymns were harmonious and the songs stimulating. The sentences, however, reinforced the transience of human existence. In a sermon, Bishop George Lashibikon of Undo Diocese of Anglican Communion charged all to live well in Christ. The service soon drew to a close. And Olaika's remains were later interred at Fajui amidst tears and sorrow. What a tragic end of a stylish life. This is how cancer has cancelled the dream of a legendary life. The dreadful ailment that sent Olayinka to her early grave began as a twist of fate. In late 2008, she noticed some hardness in her left breast. It was a cancerous lump but she did not know. Then she told a friend, Mrs. Ebuanuzie, who runs a breast cancer awareness campaign. She was advised to go for a test in Lagos. The result of the test showed there was no cause for alarm. She was relieved. In August 2009, she went for another check because she was still feeling the lump. Weeks later, the damning results came out. Olainka had stage 3 breast cancer. That was the ugly beginning. The cruel beginning of an untimely end. But she did not give up. She fought a titanic battle of survival. 
from Lagos to London to Canada. She embarked on treatments ranging from radiotherapy to chemotherapy, all in a bid to escape the snare of cancer. It was exercise in futility. In March 2011, she went for a review in London. It was bad news. Cancer had hit her bones and spines. The doctor said there was no need for any further prescriptions. She went for another medical opinion. It was the same. But she continued her treatment. And as deputy governor, she continued to work and socialize as if nothing was wrong. In March 2012, she went to Canada for another review. It was bad news again. Cancer had hit her liver. Nevertheless, she continued her treatment. But in February 2013, cancer had moved from her liver to her lungs. That was the end of the road. She died two months later. From the Red Carpet TV crew, we wish this Amazon an eternal rest. Good night.